Okay, I think we're ready to go, Claire. Okay. So fantastic. good morning and welcome to Action Coach Birmingham, another of our um, live webinars. We're broadcasting both on Zoom for those participants who joined us this morning and also on Facebook. Uh, I'm really pleased and delighted we've got Claire Lawton from Acorn Support joining us again today. Hi, Claire. Hi. Hey, everybody. It's getting quite a regular date with you. I think it must be about 10 days since we last caught up, but it's great to have you with us again. And for me, it just highlights the importance of HR on the journey that we're all going at the moment. So it's good to have you back with us. Fantastic. Um, Thank you. Great. No, it's good to have you here. Uh, just before we get into our conversation, Claire, for those who are listening on Zoom, uh, please do put your question and answers in the um, Q&A box at the top and I'll keep monitoring that as we go along and any, any comments or questions we'll make sure they get relayed live on the on the webinar. If you are listening on Facebook um, I'd love you to, to click like if this is your first time perhaps give us a love heart if you've been with us before and, and also tag live or tag repeat if you're watching live or watching this later on and also uh, there's a bit of an internal competition with myself and my colleagues as to where you're listening from how far we can reach uh, via social media in the modern world that we're all now living in and working in. So we'd love to know where you're listening from. Um, please, do, uh, please do tag where you are, put your contact details and your questions. If we can't back to, get back to you straight away on Facebook with your questions, uh, I'll make sure that either myself or Claire respond to you, um, reach out to you straight afterwards. Also, I'd love to put uh, wins with action coach, hashtag wins with action coach. See if we can get that hashtag trending for, uh, for Claire and ourselves this morning. So Claire, it's great to have you back. Uh, we've all been on a bit of a journey since we last spoke, I guess, with the, the, the government guidance and, and everything else that's going on at the moment. It's been an interesting time, hasn't it? Oh, it certainly has. And it will continue to be as well while we transition into our next phase, however that's going to look. Absolutely, absolutely. And I think it just highlights that the one slide, which you'll know now, Claire, we've seen it before, it's all about having that plan. You know, the plan for your business, the plan for your staff, your marketing plan, you know, it's all about knowing and having an idea of where you're going and how you're going to move your business forwards. And in particular, I guess today we're talking about how you can move your business forwards from an HR, from a staffing point of view. Yeah. Uh, again, just before we get into our conversation, I'm going to share these again at the end. But Claire, there's your details. Just checking. I've got them correct. I'm sure I think That's I have. Nice. Yeah. Brilliant. Thank you. Uh, and my own details as well. So um, please do, do make contact with us directly. Um, if you're listening to this in record mode later on, and we'd love to, to have that one to one conversation. And we'll both mention at the end how we can help you further. Um, you, you mentioned transition a minute ago, Claire, and I, we, we've shared this slide before, haven't we, about you know, our staff and ourselves being at different points on the, on the road of change, the transition route. And, um, and I guess there are still people who are perhaps still not got you know, as far as perhaps others have on that journey, particularly when we think about our staff and our colleagues and even our family and our friends. Yeah. You know, we're all in very different, very different places. And what's highlighted to me over the last few weeks is, is how we'll be in a different place depending on what industry we're working in. Um, as we've seen from the restrictions that are slightly, you know, sort of being eased very slightly, you know, they were talking about construction work, for example. You know, if you're in a certain industry, then the government is now encouraging you to think if you can do it safely and practically to start, you know, employees start going back to work. Um, but yes, it, you know, it's just a, a really interesting time for employees. Now, you know, what, what experience have you had so far, Claire? Have you had any sort of, is there any common themes that are coming up in your, your inquiries? Yeah, I mean, one of the things that we've really got is that understanding of what the health and safety actions need to be for an employer. Mm. Um, for Foremost, before you then talk about what actually has to happen to enable people to come back. Um, Ireland, I believe it is, with the health and safety executive have put together a new... COVID risk assessment which every employer has to have and if you don't have the accurate risk assessment then you're going to fall over at some point and that risk assessment really does need to be applied to the building and certain roles so how are you going to manage people who are walking through the door and things like that but um, having an up-to-date risk assessment is, is vital understand the situation, plan to mitigate the risks, issue those out with training, without assumptions, and evaluate and to keep doing that. And with the way things are at the moment with the um, returning to work and where the pandemic is, 
the guidance really is that that has to be on at least a weekly basis. Absolutely. It sounds a bit like your cash flow forecast, you know, <laughs> the, the, the bigger the challenge is, the, you know, the bigger the challenge, the more frequently you need to go back and look at it and have a real, really tight handle on it. And uh, you know, yeah. I, I'll move, move on to this other slide that you and I have shared many times as well. It's, it's you know, the thing about the journey ahead and we've talked a lot and I've done a lot of work with other businesses around vision and mission and marketing. But today it is really all about, you know, thinking about how we can support our staff in returning to work and, and also ourselves. Uh, yeah. You know, thinking about our, you know, our mindset, preparing mentally for the sprint phase, personal care for ourselves and our staff. And I was just saying to you, Claire, before the, the webinar started, that I was talking to a business owner this morning. And, you know, the BFO that came to light in that conversation for us both is about treating every single member of staff as if it's their first day back or first day in the job. You know, regardless of how long the member of staff has been with, it, with the company, whether they, they've been with you three months, three years, 30 years, everyone is in the same position of coming back to a new workplace in a new environment. Yeah, and that is vital. Um, we, you, we, were, we were talking about it's, it's quite easy for us to make assumptions as to what needs to be done. We've been talking for most of the year about um, hygiene everybody needs to wash their hands and you wash your hands for 20 seconds and you make sure that you're getting in between and, and it's that yeah. full um that full hand washing but has everybody understood the implication and the importance of that in your workplace and they might not because we can make that assumption um there's a number of videos that are online where um there's, there's one in particular where there is somebody in a canteen, I think there are five or six people who are all at an appropriate distance and one person goes in, they've got some UV light that they, they look at afterwards. One person goes in with this, this stuff on their hands and within 20 minutes, they then look under the UV light to see where this contaminant is every person is impacted mm. every mm. single person is impacted and, and what we need to be doing is ensuring that we are not making assumptions on what people's knowledge is we ensure that we're training them into the requirements of your business and your way of mitigating the risks for you and, and then repeat it and if there are people who are not listening or are not following those processes correctly what we're looking to do is rather than discipline them because ultimately we can is to have that this is why we have to do this this is an education the implications are this big and you need to do it again and do that coaching rather than the discipline side but ultimately if people do still fail to follow then that could end up in a dismissal or a disciplinary process really Absolutely. Uh, I guess uh, just as you're talking, it feels like yeah, the, the industry that should be the best at doing this is the, the food production industry. I mean, they, this must be sort of bread and butter to them in terms of hygienic workplace. And I guess, you know, I'm just thinking now out, li out, out loud as I'm talking to you live, but there must be, you know, some sectors that have got more experience in doing this in the past that perhaps we could learn from. And if you've got colleagues and contacts in different sectors of industry, you know, different industries, Go and go and talk to them. Go and talk to the you know the businesses in your industrial park. Go and talk to other people, yeah. and learn, let's learn from each other and try and get the best practices in place. You know, and make sure we've got a sterile environment. But your example there of people just, you know, queuing up to wash their hands. You know, if you've got limited facilities, toilet facilities in your premises, you've got one toilet, two toilets with two sinks. You know, it's again, it's then about the impact on productivity, the impact on on how you're going to manage just very very simple basic processes like that going forward so it's about planning and thinking that through some of that planning can be um changed start and finish times changed break times um actually potentially working a seven day week it really does depend on the the, the requirements of the business and the way in which productivity and and work can be delivered successfully because this is all about ensuring that every employee is safe and the business is successful going through these changes that we have and we have to think laterally um you know it's it's sort of a little bit different to what we've done previously but we it's doable in the main 
Absolutely. And, and I guess the other thing is about building confidence by having those right processes and right plans in place. It's building confidence for both your staff so that they're, they're happy and confident to come back to work. You talked earlier on about disciplinaries, et cetera, but also for your customers. We need to be able to demonstrate. It's a bit like the food hygiene. I keep going back to the food industry. It's a bit like having that food hygiene rating that we're yeah. so familiar with in restaurants and takeaways. You know, we now need to see, I guess, I don't know whether the government are thinking of some sort of similar process coming into the work for workplace but regardless of what the government to do we need to make sure we've got that sort of that awareness yes and, and building that confidence into our customers or with yes. our customers i mean the, one of the things to remember as the as well is that food hygiene rating is the rating on one day and evidence of what's been done previously we need That's to ensure good. that we have this going forwards one of the questions that um i was asked the other day is Okay, I want to make sure that everybody is safe. Um, I do need people to be in the office because that is where, um, where we work, where the technology is, um, the cost implications for this particular employer to um, enable the technology to be in everybody's home isn't feasible. So what do we do? How do we mitigate the risks that we have? Well, clearly defined risk assessment, clearly defined process of um, ensuring that everybody's clean and safe when they come in. Can I do a temperature test on each employee um, when they come to work? And the answer is yes, you can request. The employee could actually refuse. And what are you gonna do with that information? How long is that information gonna be stored for? What is the purpose of it? Well, you can demonstrate a clear purpose because a raised temperature is one of the early indicators of COVID. Um, but it's what you do with it. And, and it really would need to be defined as being that you're checking that on a daily basis and potentially keep that information for one month because we know there can be an incubation period before we then start to see the signs. But that request and that authority needs to be done every time you ask for the um, temperature test, because otherwise that somebody can withdraw that authority at any point. Absolutely. But it's one of the very simple things that we do. Um, but it's how do you then take that test? <laughs> I, I guess it, I mean, there's, there's, you know, we were saying before we started, you know, I think there's so much, so many different areas we could talk about, Claire. And I think, you know, the idea of perhaps just doing a, a joint workshop where we can invite clients and, and people who want to, to spend longer with us to go into yeah. some of these areas in more detail, I think would be a great idea. Absolutely. Um, but again, going back to, to systems and processes in your organization, you know, how do you undertake different tasks in your organization? Yeah. And do you need every member of staff to come back to work in the workplace? Can you have people working remotely on a longer term basis? And, and I guess for many organizations, if they've got that mix, there's then that communication challenge about communicating online and in person at the same time, making sure everyone's got the same messaging, the same information to all continue to work at, you know, in, in, the same, in the same way or as, as in the best way possible. Also, one of the things that we do have to be considering is how are we going to be selecting one person to return to work, either working from home or in the office in your, your workplace or to, you know, so are they going to return? Which ones do you select? And are they going to be from home or in the office? Which ones do you select? Because we still have that obligation to ensure that we are working fairly and reasonably with all employees. And, and, it, and I guess, it, again, there's, there's two sides to everything. But once you've selected, you know, how, how can you in, put that into practice? You know, what criteria do you take into account if somebody says yes or no? You know, how flexible? And it is about being flexible, but how flexible do you, do you have to be as an employer to accommodate your, your um, staff's needs at home? There'll be many, many employees who still have, for various reasons, you've got a child in year three, they're not going to be at school. If you've got a child in year one, they are going to be at school. You know, there's all sorts of... Potentially. They potentially. can potentially be in school. And there, yeah, that, yeah. that then brings a whole raft of issues because, um, yes, you, you've got childcare that you would normally have, which would be school. Um, and then parents or grandparents or friends or a childminder and how do you manage that because the work is available from the employer's perspective but the employee is not able to fulfill that work either because their circumstances don't enable them to 
or you're not in, in able to get them to work from home. So how do you manage that? And you have to ensure that that is applied fairly and reasonably and you mm. document everything. That's a real key. Yes, I think, you know, absolutely, you know, you don't, we don't know what's going to happen down the road. We don't know what processes we might, we might need to put in place. So documenting it is, is really important. And I, I admit I've been caught out myself in that in the past when working in, in other industries, you know, it's making sure you make a note of everything as you go along. Yes. And I, I guess we're, we're talking a lot about process and the physical environment, but the other side of this, which is a huge side, it is, you know, the mindset and the mental health and the journey, as I, I touched on earlier on, that your employees and you yourself as, a, as an owner of a business would have been on, mm. and that people will be in a different place. And it's about how do we get people back into the, the right mindset? And you know, the, the, you know, people will be very anxious, I'm sure, about going back into a public place or the workplace where they may, you know, the risk is high of contracting this awful virus. And so it's that mindset as well. And there may well be some people who have simply, um, taking this time out from work and realized actually their values and their priorities in life are different and don't want to come back at all. And so it's sort of, there's, there's, there's a myriad of all sorts of different issues going on there for indi each individual and everyone is a unique situation, but as an employer, as a business owner, it's trying to get a grasp of all those different scenarios and work with each individual, I guess. Absolutely. You're right. Um, that mental preparation is, is key. Um, you know, how do we mentally prepare for going into lockdown? Well, we didn't have the option of, of doing that. It was kind of foist upon us. Um, you know, we had a bit of preparation, social distancing, you know, keep, um, only go out when you need to. Um, but that wasn't as strong as it was before. But where you then have all of these... Um, concepts of, of keeping away from people other than those in your household and you're then saying well we need to go back into work that can actually disrupt people quite significantly um, some people may well have found that they prefer the working from home um, they may find that their productivity is better working from home they mm. may fear as you say well what's going to happen when I go into work because you know, I've been safe, it's just been me. And now I'm going back into an open plan office and I've got that noise and I've got that disruption and how am I going to deal with it? Um, that's, going to be, that's going to be very interesting and will need to be monitored and, and tracked. Um, our mental health first aiders are available to help people think through and talk through the reality of their concerns and how to manage them. Yes, and I, I myself am a, a mental health trained first aid. I think, you know, now more than ever, it's really important if you've got that opportunity as an employer to have somebody trained within your workplace as a mental health first aider or to reach out to, some, to another organisation that has got, I don't, I don't know if you have access to them within your organisation, Claire, um, but it's really important to, I think, to, for, for employers to have access to that support somehow, whether yeah. it's somebody in the workforce or an outside organisation that can provide that service but to have a line of communication where people can talk to somebody. Yeah, we, I took the decision to ensure that all of our team are trained as mental health first aiders because mm. sort of slightly different subject, but, but when you're working with your employees, how you select the right person or how they volunteer to be the right person to act as a mental health first aider is crucial. And often, particularly in smaller organizations, Having somebody internal isn't going to be the right thing because, well, who knows who, what's going to happen? Are they going to be the office gossip? You know, will they have the support of their manager to provide that work? Because you could be out in an instant of your work for an hour or, or more while you're providing that support to that individual. And then the temptation to say, who was that what were they talking about what's going on oh I bet it's their aunt Flo you know all those sorts of things and that's got to you've got to have quite a resilient person to be able to respond to that but we've got our team trained to in, ensure that that support is there when people need it absolutely I think it's a really valid point Claire and I, I say from my own personal experience having worked in a large corporate I was a mental health first aider 
and juggling that and making it not obvious that I was giving people support at the same time as them doing their job and myself doing my job was, was sometimes a challenge. Uh, yeah. And so I think, you know, having that external support is, is another fantastic option. And, you know, if you haven't, and you're listening now and you haven't got that in place, you know, please reach out to Claire and she can give you some advice and guidance on that. Absolutely. But my personal view, every workplace by law has to have a physical first aider. And I think right now every workplace should have something in place whether it's a physical mental health first aid or access to that support as people come back to work. It will be coming we'll through. It will be coming through as legislation. Um, Brexit was getting in the way, but we haven't heard the B word for ages. We're, we're on to the right. COVID side. So it I will be happening. a long time there until today. I oh, know, sorry. Sorry if I put, said the wrong word. <laughs> <lunch. laughs> <laughs> yes, I'm sure, I'm sure that will come back in time, but... Uh, but no, absolutely. And I think the other thing that's really important right now is, is the, <clears throat> the words along the bottom of the screen. It's all about communication and, and not only talking about the challenges, but also having that positive mindset and talking to a staff about the positive sides of the time they've had out. And, you know, talking about the positive times of what we've been doing, connecting with our families, reconnecting with our neighbours and our communities, you know, and being thankful for the flexibility that our staff have shown over the period of time of furlough, whatever has been going on in your organisation. And, and be as positive, but as, as open and, and trans, what's the word? Um, trans, uh, translucent, I'm trying to think of the right word now. But transparent. It, yeah. Transparent, that's the word, having a mental block. In our communication as possible, you know, take our team on the journey. And if we have, as business owners, been taking that time out to review our vision, our marketing, our vision, you know, now is the time as you warm up your business and you take your staff back on board full time to share that and take that with them. And, yeah. and sort of, as I said right at the beginning, you know, start, treat them as if it's the first day in a new job. Uh, yes. and get to know get to know them let them get to know you again and talk about how we're going to work together going forwards yeah. one of the things to also be aware of is that as organizations are starting to go back a lot of them aren't going right we're all back it's phasing it's making those adjustments to work in patterns um, maybe varying the start time so that we haven't then got an influx of people at the same time coming through the door but if you are only bringing back part of your team, make sure you're communicating with all of your team so they understand why we're bringing proportions back. The, the, if they're laid off and on furlough, the confirmation that, that they're still a valued member, use the time to um, follow up on training. Let us know what training you're doing. Let us know how that training's gone. So that, and also when people are back in, share that information so that everybody can learn. Absolutely. I think it's also, you know, we, I used the word a moment ago about getting to know our communities, but it's actually rebuilding and building that community and maintaining that community feel in the workplace. That people feel, yes. even if they're working remotely or coming in and out late or whatever the processes you have to put in place, that people still feel part of that work, that work community that they're, they're you know, they're employed Agreed. by. Agreed. Absolutely important. Yeah, and I guess the other thing is is about sort of just re-educating your staff, you know, and thinking about also the skill sets they have. It's a great time as you're bringing people back to think about the skill sets they've got, yeah, uh, and and sort of realigning your team. Uh, and we've sort of said, you know, I've said a bit about you know the mental health and the support you can give. Something we're doing actually, coaches, lots of realignments at the moment, bringing teams together. And, and having those conversations about where the, the journey has been on, what they've been doing, and sort of starting to reset the focus and the vision as a team, doing a team alignment. I think it's, that's really important so that people feel part of something and coming back to something. And I, I don't know, Claire, if you've probably got advice on this as well, but in terms of giving people notice to come back, you know, as you said a moment ago, it's, we, we all had to suddenly stop. And I remember driving up the M6 um, eight weeks ago from, from here in Kent where I live. And, and on the same day, having done three and a half hours drive up, that same day driving three and a half hours home because it was almost instantaneously the guidelines you know if you can work from home go home so I almost went round the band about it at Fort Dundop and came straight back um, yeah. but we want to make sure people have that time to re readjust and think about coming back I guess but is there any guidelines around that? Um, so the reality is is that because while people are laid off they're still employed and the employer can say I want you back tomorrow. Right. And that's tough. They could actually say, I want you back today. Can I see you in an hour? Technically, you can do that. Yeah. Um, I think it's a case of working and communicating and discussing with your employees because 
there will be arrangements that need to be put in place. So for me, for example, I've got two girls who are in senior school and they're not even being thought about until September. So if I was having to go back into a workplace, it would just be that arrangement with um, their dad and stepdad as to how they can be supported. Um, if there are issues that an employee has, they should discuss them. But ultimately, the employer can say tomorrow, let's have you back. But I think that that discussion, that guideline, also giving them the information about how the risks are going to be mitigated within their workplace so that they have all of that knowledge and they're then not getting to the door and going, I can't be let in because I haven't got my, my face mask on or I haven't got my gloves on or um, things like that. Um, so yeah, ultimately, immediately, practically, yeah. I would go for at least a few days. Brilliant. And, and the other, another lovely thing I've seen doing, um, particularly in America, I have to say, but certainly I started to see over here, is, is business owners taking their customers on the journey of that warm-up process, that staff coming back to work. You know, we've got Claire who's coming back next week. She's really looking forward to working with, with our clients on this. You yeah. know, sort of taking people on that journey so people can get to know um, you know, it's, I guess from a business point of view, it's about promoting yourself and marketing yourself and positioning yourself. But from an HR point of view, it's about, you know, helping staff to, to reconnect with their customers, helping customers to reconnect with their staff and, and slowly, you know, taking time to build up and, and get people in the right mindset in the right place to start yeah. their roles again. Absolutely. Because one of the things that, that I think we talked about in one of our earlier discussions is that what's so important is you maintain all of the connections that you have for your business, suppliers, customers, um, peers, you know, and you, your employees are fundamental to that. And the easier you can be, you know, for a lot of companies, they've still been working. My business, so part of my communication is, guys, we're still here. We're not in the office, yeah. but we're still here and we're available to work with you. And just bringing that up and particularly your suppliers, when they know that you're going to be increasing productivity or something's got to change, it helps them plan what's happening further down in the cycle. The other thing just on that, because it's just spring into mind, is um, also when businesses are thinking about their finances, share the love <laughs> so you know if they've had the grants if they've got the loans if they have purchased things and they've got payments that need to go out start getting them out start sharing that cycle of ensuring that all businesses are paid Absolutely. for the work and, and services and products that have been provided and it will help to ensure that the economy starts moving back in the right direction because my thought is a lot was like cash is king i'm going to keep it absolutely yes yeah but we have to start we have to sit on our moral um view on what would i want as a business owner i'd yeah. want to be paid so let's make sure that that kind of happens slightly off hr apologies but it's kind of no. somehow no i've got a couple of questions one from simon in sully i like the, the the rhyming there simon in sully, sully Huller said He's been on furlough and taken another role on. He's expecting his employer to bring him back to work. How much, it goes back to this notice question, but he's been doing another role in the meantime. What are his options? So his employer has furloughed him. He's got yeah. another job with a different employer for the duration. Uh, you're going to have to try and negotiate with your existing employer about when they might want you back or just explain to your new employer that um, you've not been um, afforded the notice option with your existing one. Um, I guess the question is, provide that communication, have that open discussion with both parties, um, which is your role that you really want to be following through with for your career, um, and try not to brass anybody off because I don't believe in burning bridges, um, but it will go back to what your contract is. Yes, I was just about to use exactly the same phrase. Whatever you do as an employee, do not burn your bridges. Um, I was on a webinar yesterday talking about, you know, it was, a, it was our book club yesterday evening. 
and we were talking about how to win friends and influence people. <laughs> the phrase came up there and often the people you meet on the way up may well be the same people you meet on the way down. So, you know, don't burn bridges. And the other thing that came out of that book, and if you haven't read it, Claire, I'm sure you have, but if, if our listeners haven't read it, it's, it's a fantastic book to apply some of the learnings right now in terms of how to win friends and influence. Yes. But it's all about relationships and building relationships and getting to know people uh, to win their trust, to get to know, like, and trust them, which is a phrase you and I are familiar with through B&I. Um, but absolutely, as employers, it's right, it's doing that more than ever right now. The, the other sort of BFO um, that's just flowed into my mind as we've been talking, Claire, is we're talking about, you know, when we had to quickly close our businesses down or, or change the way we operated, we're now talking about this slow return to work. I go back to where I started the beginning about having a plan, and I guess there is always the risk still that somebody within the workplace could then contract this awful virus. And I guess the other thing is about making sure we've got plans and processes and protocols in place that should somebody, as you come back to work, contract it, what are you going to do? Yeah. And it's really important to make sure you've got that in place as well. One of the things that um, I've talked about with my clients, and I know you will be doing this with all of your clients with Action Coach, is future proofing the business. You know, we'll talk mm -hmm. about what is the structure of the organization when it's finished. What's the structure in the next five years? How do you plan for who's going to be um, taking over so that we can retire if that's what we want to do? What's been fundamental and, and a real impact for businesses where somebody has been so ill is that they've suddenly realised, I've got no plan for how they're going to be, how that role is now going to be covered by somebody else. It was all in their brain. It, what do we do now? We haven't got them here. You know, so you're managing those emotional responses because some you know we know people have died or that people are it's taking an incredibly long time for people to be able to recover from this and a lot of people won't fully recover so what is fundamental is looking at the skills for each role ensuring that you systemize the normal for every role humanize the the exceptions the 80 20 rule but make sure that that is in place and that you're looking at developing people to step up into the next position because that is fundamental to the success of a business i think it's a really good really good point and it's we've talked we've talked and i've talked to another with other business owners about systemization and whilst you know we're in this training and warming up phase um you know think about the systems and processes but even more so as we've got staff coming back you know, it's a great way for them to be involved in that, not only to, to sort of, you know, record and, and review your systems right now, but to think about different ways of doing things. But absolutely, you know, we could have um, Sarah in accounts or, or Simon on, on the production floor that suddenly comes down with the virus or symptoms of it and has to leave the, it almost immediately has to leave the premises. Yes. It's about making sure we can continue to operate uh, and keep our customers happy, look after and protect our staff and ourselves by having those systems in place, both to cover you know, a policy of what you do, but also to, to ensure resilience and continuity in the organisation. Yes. As you said a moment ago, to future-proof and to proof it right now. Mm. Absolutely. So, so important. I mean, yeah, there's, there's so many different areas that, uh, uh, that need to be considered, aren't they, just in thinking of our staff you know, as, as they come back. And it's also... You know, we, talk, we touched slightly on, on personal care as well, you know, in their personal situation, making sure that, you know, looking after themselves, everything from, you know, sort of the hygiene of washing their hands to, to childcare and issues at home. And also the other big thing we, we haven't really touched on, but is about people, how people get to work. You know, is it actually practical for people to, to travel to and from work in the first instance, given the government's guidelines about avoiding public transport? You know, do you have bike stores in your, place, in your place of work? Do you have enough car parking? You know, there's some very, very practical implications. It's all very well just saying we're going to open up, but actually practically, how's that going to happen? Yeah, yeah. Um, and it's about having that dialogue with the employee because as an employer, it, unless it's in the contract, it's not your responsibility to determine how an individual gets into work. 
that's that's what happens with the employee i mean you've got a fairly uh, hefty commute um <laughs> from home to to fort dunlop um and that's part of, yeah it's part of the consideration that you have when you when you go into any employment um from an employer's perspective how can you support an employee on being able to be back being able to fulfill their role a client of ours has been providing um face covers not the face masks as in the um 3m ones but face covers and gloves for employees to use when they're on public transport because we want to ensure that they can get into work in the safest way possible um mm -hmm. but you're right that has to be considered and, and also flexibility and start and finish times too because the bus services have changed for example um so it's having that dialogue but understanding where the responsibilities lie. Absolutely. So in terms of um, conscious of time, Claire, in terms of the support you can give to organisations, what sort of services can you offer to help them in terms of getting back to work and their businesses back up and on operating? So at ACORN, what we do is we focus on that employer and we understand what their headaches are. Um, we look to understand their business and how they engage with their employees. Um, so we may well have policies and procedures and handbooks and risk assessments and communication strategies, but all of those underpin the way in which that employment relationship works. And we then work together to resolve any of those headaches. So is it a headache of saying, well, I don't know how to ensure that I fairly select the right people to come back, or I'm not sure how to ensure that my documentation for bringing some back and some remaining on furlough is correct. All of those things we can support with. Um, and our support can be from a discussion all the way through to writing the letters or if there are any uh, disciplinaries or capability issues that we address we can be there in the meeting and supporting them with that so it's a fairly wide answer because it depends yeah. on that organization and what they need and where their skill levels lie yeah and I, I guess again I'm just my mind is, is floating with all sorts of thoughts as you talk Claire but you know, going back to where we started on that very first slide about having a plan uh, and, you know, the, the situation that the journey everyone has been through, and I, I come back to this slide, you know, there's all sorts of emotions going on there. And it's been a very, very emotional journey for every single person involved, whether you've been working throughout this, whether you've not been working, whether you've got family and friends who have been impacted health wise. Emotions, I guess, I, I don't guess, I know, I'm sure, are running really high for everybody on a very personal level at the moment. So it's, for me, my, my advice would be about sitting down and coming up with a plan first, you know, talking to somebody that, you know, whether it's a coach, whether it's an HR advisor, yeah. whether it's your board of trustees, you know, however your organization is structured. Um, absolutely. Think, sit down and start to plan how you're going to return the, the business back to how you how you're going to warm up the business going back to the phrase on the other side, how you're going to warm it up and don't just rush in and make knee jerk decisions and say right we're all back tomorrow you know there is so so much to consider and to think through you know from a very practical basis from individuals personal circumstances through policies procedures everything we sort of almost touched on yeah and, and as i said there's there's almost too much to go into a whole in-depth discussion in, yeah. in the time we've got today but it's about planning and bringing people in to support you and doing that if you need it because one of those key things of bringing in the right people to help you have that discussion is quite often we find that when we're entrenched in our own organization we may miss something or we may make assumptions because we've always done it a particular way or well, everybody will know about how to wash their hands <laughs> not necessarily so bringing in the right people um your coach your hr consultant your um, health and safety advisor your accountant bring in all of those those sources of knowledge to help ensure that your plan is going to be robust and flexible enough to adapt to whatever we need to be doing going forwards but you're right planning contingencies are vital 
to ensure that success comes out of this situation? Absolutely, I think that that's the key thing, the word there, success. And it's about making sure that we do this the right way. So I've said with you and I've said with many others, so that you're, you and your business are in the very best place to run that race, to sprint yes. when we do go back into full, full work. When we're starting here. blocks. Absolutely, when we're on the starting blocks. So it, it's really important and that, you know, there is, it's about making sure we get everything in the right, you know, in every detail sort of covered off. Yeah. And, and that plan, and as you said, that external perspective, but also um, just thinking about government guidelines, we've not really touched on those today, but it's really important not just to look at the guidelines that apply to your own business, but try as a business owner to have an understanding of what the latest information, for example, about schools returning yes. or about, you know, about other aspects that may not affect your business or your industry or perceived to, but actually will, infect, will impact on your employees. Yes. Um, What's happening with your supply industry? chain? for example. So construction industry, go back to work. Can anybody get hold of a bag of plaster at the moment? No, they can't because the um, company that makes plaster has, has closed. Um, flower industry, you know, or, or a cafe. Well, you can't get hold of flour because actually the, the issue with flour isn't actually about sourcing the product, it's sourcing no. the bags to get it in. Absolutely, yes. So I, I, I think... now have a four kilogram bag of self-raising flour. It's <laughs> huge. It will get used because I love baking, but you know, it's it's talking to that supply chain, ensuring that everybody knows what's going to happen, and ensuring that everybody moves along with you. I'm smiling, Claire, because we're talking about flour, and um, at the weekend we're not connected on Facebook, but I made a range of cakes with my children. And on many webinars, I've talked about staying above and below the line. And I have to confess, I did go below the, below the line with my blame, excuse and denial for the failure in my cakes. But actually, you know, okay. I, I, what I, should have been, I, was, I was blaming the oven instead of taking accountability for my ability to read instructions. Um, but, it was, <laughs> uh, but it just it did make me smile when you say, you know, we've struggled to get flour down here in Kent as well. I've heard the same story that, you know, it's available in large bags, but it's a packaging. So it's a really good point, you know, in terms of returning your staff and, and thinking about taking your business forwards. And, and when you want to start trading, just think about not just your business, but those connected to it. Uh, and also, you know, your customers, you know, are they, do you have a business where they actually um, are, it's essential to come in and see you face to face or can you continue longer doing things in a virtual manner and, yeah. until perhaps we've got more information, and more clarity and customers have built up the confidence. Absolutely. Um, you know, customers, customers are a, a fickle bunch. We all are, you know, we, you know, <laughs> uh, on, we're, uh, human. Been also, we're, we're all human. Absolutely. Absolutely. Um, but it, is, it comes down to that communication and taking customers on the journey with you and, and building that confidence up slowly. And I think as a, as a consumer myself, I'm more likely to go and do business or give business to somebody that I think has taken a considered approach in the production of their product or, or in terms of how I'm going to engage with them, you know, not just rushing back. We're, we're all back here and a bit of a slap dash approach. So it is really important to take your customers and your staff on the journey. Absolutely, it is. I, I think the, the biggest BFO from this conversation, Claire, is about setting up a perhaps a workshop where we can go into some of these areas in, in more detail, perhaps do a two hour workshop uh, next week or, or the week after. So what I would say now is, you know, if you're listening to us on Facebook or on Zoom, do keep an eye on my website and Claire's website because we'll get something in the diary We'll, we'll put a workshop together where we perhaps a bit more interactive. We have you live on, on, on the Zoom call with us and we can sort of be more specific about answering queries and talking to you about your specific industry and, and, uh, and specific queries that, that callers, that uh, listeners and, and participants may have. I think that would be a really good idea because I think uh, as what's become apparent to me is, is different industries, you know, we've heard from, from the government, different industries will be, will be moving forward at different uh, pace at different rates hence my multiple stars on my chart now you know there are some still some people who are here uh, at, the, at sort of you know the training and vision and mission reevaluating their marketing there are some who have already started dare i say um warming up and and sort of returning to work interestingly i bought this house on an, on an industrial an industrial estate a building site a building estate um and the, the builders have said they're returning their staff to work but then again they've chosen which sites to return them to and it, it may be the same in, in, in those who are listening to their organisations. They may have multiple sites, multiple outlets, uh, and it's about how they can you know, sort of take a stepped approach to 
returning the business back to normal. And yeah. my other my other bit of advice, I think Claire and you may have a view on this as well, is, is go and learn from other people. The supermarkets have been doing this approach now for you know eight weeks plus. Yeah. Um, the, the, the big sheds, as I call them, being q and home base. Why have they started opening up now? Because they've been and learned from the supermarkets. So do take time as you're out and about as a business owner to see what other organisations are doing, see what other measures they are, they are taking. I imagine wherever we go, we're going to see these stripes on the wall, on the floor, you know, to space us out. Yeah, we so will do. And, and um, I mean, I've had a long, long term view that, you know, look at my business, HR consultants, there are, there are a lot of very excellent peers that I've got out there. Do I embrace what they do? Do I talk to them? Um, or do I fear them as the enemy? No, far from it, because I'm not in a position to say that I am the best. I've got the technical knowledge, but what you may need, you may not like the way in which I work. And I might not like the way in which you work, but it's working together. And if we can, you know, if, if you've got two or three businesses that, that all make widgets and you all need a particular product and you can't get that from one supplier, talk to each other, communicate, collaborate and learn with each other. And wouldn't that be a far better place to be in rather than constantly fighting and beating against each other? Um, uh, absolutely. Couldn't agree more. You know, there are, I know from, from Action Coaches franchise structure, there's over 10,000 businesses just in the very centre of Birmingham. Um, you know, and so there's an abundance of business and there's an abundance of, of agencies, organisations that are out there to help and support. But you know, there's abundance of, as you say, of peers in the same industry as, as, as you as a listener uh, to this webinar right now. You know, go and talk to your peers, go and find out what they're doing and help each other. And also look at where you can perhaps get economies of scale. You know, can you work together if you're in an industrial estate? Can you work together on getting uh, these screens? Or can you do a, a bulk purchase of security locks on doors to, to manage people coming in and out your organization? Yeah. You know, see how you can put systems in place. Or maybe as an industrial estate, you decide to get some external security or barriers or something to manage a car flow. You know, think about how you can work not just within your organization, but with the, the wider environment and the wider group of organizations you're located with. Absolutely, that's that's vital. Um, it really is, um, and having that planning and that thought, and embracing the people that you that are in your community. You know, one mm -hmm. as you said earlier, community is so important, and I do firmly believe that the community in business is there to support each other. And you know, if you can understand that and work with it wow it's a far better place to be in it really is I guess, plus you might have recipes that you can trade with each other <laughs> <laughs> yeah well, i might have to learn to bake but uh, <laughs> stay above the well, lines to be to be fair i was on a uh, slight tangent but that's me i was on an um, uh, employment lawyers update the other evening which started at six and it was a Zoom and it was very interactive. Well, I'd got children chomping at the bit wanting food. And I was making some um, like dough balls, garlicky, cheesy dough balls. And I was baking while I, I got my computer up and was baking at the time. And somebody was like, can I have the recipe, please? Because that looks delicious. <laughs> so, <laughs> anything well, goes. I, I, know from, I know from doing many webinars over the last few weeks, uh, a few months now, actually, that we've had listeners who are driving along, we've had listeners who are, you know, doing all sorts of other activities, mowing the lawn, you know, and it is great that we can make absolute best use of our time. You know, I would always, always argue that you're not perhaps going to learn and take as much on board if you're driving or if you're doing something that needs your attention and your focus, but absolutely, I'd rather have somebody listening than not. And actually, you know, if they get one or two golden bullets or golden BFOs, as I call them, from, yeah. from listening to the last hour, then that's absolutely brilliant. And um, the other thing I just wanted to touch on, Claire, we've, we've sort of, mentioned it in our, in our conversation but as people come back to work as we start to to go back to work and, and start our business up now is a great time to start a process of reviewing all of our policies we can't do everything straight away but absolutely you know review your working from home policy review your disciplinary policy review your you know whatever policy you have absolutely make sure it's fit for purpose right now 
yeah fit for purpose for your business i mean working from home is a huge one and hopefully people have done that as we were going in because your obligations as an employer continue no matter where somebody is working so things like ensuring that they're working at an appropriate workstation you still need to do that um, ensuring that they assess to make sure there's no trips and hazards around so no cables all over the place ensuring that the insurance is covered for the equipment being in somebody's home rather than my insurance is my insurance for, for my business is for laptops because we go out to client sites but it's had to extend the knowledge that they're going to be somewhere different um, one employee at a client's was sitting on the sofa with a couple of cushions and trays and they thought that was fine oh no let's stop that now because what we don't want to have is a claim that they've got back problems and then can't work properly because they're in pain because their back hurts because they've spent two months on the sofa you know it's thinking um forward of the things that that we need to be addressing mm -hmm. Brilliant. Um, just before we finish, I've just had a question coming from Julie in Birmingham. I don't know whereabouts in Birmingham she is. Um, she's just asking about holiday entitlement as she comes back off furlough. Um, I'm sure that's a query you've had before, Claire, yeah. in terms of are people still entitled to their full holiday allowance? Is that yeah. changed in terms of requesting holiday? She's just asking, you know, am I still entitled to it? But I suppose there might be one or two other points you might want to cover off on, on annual leave. Yeah, absolutely. So while you're laid off, um, so there's two things here from an employment law perspective you are laid off from doing your work and then the employer from a HMRC category puts you into a furlough status in order to claim for 80% of your normal earnings so there's two slight differentials there you um, still accrue you're still employed so you still accrue all of your normal contractual benefits which includes holiday so what do we do well as an employer part of your preparing and managing may well be to say to your teams well actually because we've been in this situation a long time you may have missed easter next week for our schools was going to be the whitson week um, it may be that we're asking employees to take some annual leave before they come back off furlough right um that is possible to stagger people's return, i guess sorry a great way to stagger return to work it can stagger return it can also mean that the employer is managing their finances because they can still claim 80 percent, but they would need to top up the 20 percent because that's their contractual salary mm -hmm. so it's a way of managing it we have been given the option of carrying forward the um, four weeks of holiday for the next two years. So if you're not able to consume the holiday during this, this holiday year, it can be carried forwards. However, that may have an additional cost to the employer. Um, holiday is there for people to have rest and relaxation, and, um, but it's by mutual agreement an employer can require people to take time off by providing at least two uh, double the notice of the time that you want so if it's a week provide at least two weeks before um, the reality is that we need to be working and managing things correctly if you have had half of your team who are working while the other half are furloughed they're going to need a rest um, so do we manage it around do we do we chop and change it slightly communication dialogue and future thinking about how this will be managed is essential long complicated also, answer but yeah you can have all the and <laughs> yes you do still accrue yeah, and there's a, again we, we haven't got time to go into this conversation today but it's all about the equality and diversity legislation as well and taking that on board and making sure we're adhering to that um yes We've got five minutes, so it's probably too big, a, too big a topic to go into equality and diversity for the Equality Act right now, but I think it could be certainly something we, we could cover off on the workshop. Yes. I think that would be a good, yeah. a good area to cover as well. And, uh, and um, doing a workshop together would be fantastic. I'd certainly be up for that because we can delve into 
a bit more of the detail of well how do you plan how do you prepare what do we need to be doing um, you know if you've got concerns about performance that may have been delivered during the furlough period you can address that and also it enables those participants such as Julie or Simon or others to to give a bit more of a context around the question and we can give yeah. a much more accurate and sort of Absolutely. informed response which I think would be really helpful for both of us so Absolutely. as I say please do, do um we'll put uh, we'll put something in the diary with with you Claire and we'll make sure that goes on to both of our websites and on social media so that you you listeners can can find out about that and come and join us and register for it um Claire it's been absolutely lovely having you with us today uh, I've got your contact details on the screen for all those people who want to get in touch and um and sort of you know ask any further questions likewise my own contact details are on there it'd be lovely to to hear from you if you've got further questions or want to know how we can support you further uh claire you said that you you know there's various ways in which you can give advice and guidance to organizations i love the 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 one thing that really struck me you were saying about the support is that mental health first aid i love the fact you've had all your staff trained in that capacity it is so so important we've talked several times about the emotions and the journey people will be on and i think above all else it's about giving consideration to that as we start to warm our businesses up yeah. but absolutely having this clear focus on a business that is going to thrive into the future can i just add i've i've not worked with you personally on coaching me and my business but i have with action coach and we just haven't had that opportunity yet i will add um, but anybody who is thinking about can action help coach help my business Laminek, yes it can you can gain so much invaluable information and insights and a coach working with the right person to work with you is very much your trusted critical friend who can really help to make a difference the model that you work with and you as a person i'm getting to know you quite well now um don't even hesitate in having that discussion find out what it can do and, and it's it's very much worth the investment That's you very can pay to say that now. <laughs> I'll, I'll put the recommendation on LinkedIn later for you. But uh, <laughs> no, it's very kind of you to say. And absolutely, I think both Claire and I would both be on the same page in terms of if you want support, advice and guidance in any area of your business, uh, if it's HR, you know, give Claire a call. If it's anything else, give us a call. We'd happily give you a free hour on the phone, have a chat, have a conversation, you know, however long you need. I, wouldn't, I might rephrase from saying however long you need, but, you know, we'd love to have that conversation with you, initial conversation to see what support and how we can direct um you know direct some further op op you know, opportunities to work together um Brilliant. going forward so please do get in touch claire's numbers there uh, our emails are on the screen and we will certainly get that workshop in the in the diary claire so thank you so much it's it's oh, lovely and pleasure. sunny down here in kent um i don't know what it's like where you are it's looking all right but i'm in the office for the well my home office for uh, for most of the day but i shall look forward to the eight o'clock outside with with my neighbors we, uh, we go and support the NHS and we support each other and we may even get a cheeky glass of wine over the footpath. So, uh, yeah. One of those fences that tilts up into a bar table. I've seen those. I've seen on those. Bed. Aren't they good? Yeah, they're oh, they're excellent. Until new neighbours move in, then you've got a problem. But, uh, <laughs> <laughs> but it's also Bank Holiday weekend. So enjoy. I hope the sunshine lasts. Uh, if you're listening to us, enjoy the Bank Holiday weekend. You know, it's probably the last time we're going to have a long weekend for a little while. So make the most of it. Um, and, and stay well, stay safe. Thank you for joining us today. And we look forward to you, well, you know, sort of joining us for either a webinar, uh, a workshop, and, and working with you and your business in the coming weeks and months. But most of all, stay well, stay safe, and we speak to you soon. Thank you again, Claire, and look after yourself. Thank you. Bye bye. Bye bye.